हेलो एवरी वन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक एवरी वन ऑफ यू फॉर लाइकिंग द सीरीज ऑफ इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन ऑन माई यूट्यूब चैनल टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट टेन कॉमन इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन विच यू माइट एनकाउंटर ड्यूरिंग योर इंटरव्यूज ऑन ए सी एल्स वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल माई नेम इज हरदित सिंह एंड इफ यू आर लाइकिंग माई कंटेंट प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल एंड डोंट फो गेट टू हिट दैट लाइक बटन so as you all know acls are crucial component of platform for controlling access and security so we need to be fully prepared for these acls during our interviews because if you answer these questions your interviewer will be definitely impressed by your acl knowledge because these are always quite confusing questions and let's not waste any more time and jump into those questions So the first question is what are ACLs ACLs are the rules by which service now provides granular security for its data and can be applied to individual records as well as fields with those records so it's pretty clear if you want to apply security on row level or on field level we use ACLs moving on what are different type of ACLs so this is a very commonly asked question so you should know the answer immediately i have seen many people knowing the answer but they did not answer this correctly the first one is row level acl or we can call it as table level acl which will apply on the table level the second one is column level acl or the field level acl which applies on a particular field so if the interviewer is asking you what are different type of acls just say table level acl and field level acl the third question is what is the difference between table dot none and table dot star so the answer is table dot none is a row level acl and provides access to the table like we discussed in the previous question there are two types first is the row level or the table level so when you are defining a table dot none in your acl that means you are providing access to some particular role to that table the next one is table dot star it means you are providing access to all the fields on that table so if you notice if you want to provide access to some particular user on some specific table and their records you would have to create two acls for them the first one would be the read level table dot none and then read level table dot star and then the user would be able to see those records next is what role is required to create or edit an acl so people who have created lots of acls or even if they have taken the training on acls they would know this answer it's called security underscore admin role let's go in service now and see how can we actually edit an acl i am in service now instance and i'm logged in with system administrator so this user has the admin role if i search for acl and scroll down and click on acl under system security it will present me the list of all the acls in the system if i click on one randomly you would be able to see that i will not be able to edit this even as an admin you cannot directly go and edit an acl you require a separate role for that which we discussed in the slide security underscore admin and even when you have this security underscore admin role you cannot directly use it so for using that you have to click on your profile picture you will have to click on elevate role and if you don't see this option that means you don't have security underscore admin role so you will have to ask your admin to separately give you this role when i click on this elevate role you would be presented with this pop up and it will say security underscore admin and do you want to elevate to that particular role you will check the check box and say update and now you would be able to edit any of the acls and now you can see this acl is editable if i click on back now this new button also started appearing before this this wasn't there so 
you should have a security underscore admin role and you should elevate your role to create or edit ACLs in ServiceNow. Moving on, the fifth question is when ServiceNow is evaluating ACLs, what is the order ServiceNow follows? So it searches from most specific ACL to most generic ACL. What that means is if you have to have an access on assignment group field on incident, it will try to search for ACL on that particular field. And if it did not find that there is an ACL on this, it will go to a more generic ACL. For example, in this case, it will go to tasks table assignment group ACL. And even if after it is not able to find that, it will go to a more generic ACL. You can read about all of this on the documentation of ServiceNow and I will also make a separate video if you want me to explain this. Next is ACLs uses which type of scripting? Does it use client scripting or does it use server scripting? I'll give you a second to think. Okay, so ACLs use server side scripting and the example could be gs.hasrol or current dot is new record. So you can use these statements in your server side scripting of ACLs. Next is if we have written following for the ITIL user. So we are creating a UI policy to make assignment group read only. We wrote ACL to make assignment group read only again. So UI policy and ACLs are making assignment group read only and the client script is making assignment group editable. How would that ITL user see that field? Again, I will give you a second to think and absorb this question. So UI policy and ACL are making it read only. Client script is making it editable. Will that assignment group field be editable or read only? The answer is read only because ACLs always run in the last and ACLs run in the last and that's the reason whatever you have defined in ACL will be overridden by everything and whatever you have defined to make that assignment group read only or editable will be taken into the account. So in this case, it will make it read only because ACLs are making the assignment group read only. Next is what is the execution order in an ACL? So first of all, the roles are calculated, then conditions and then script. If you have seen an ACL, we can define conditions in all these three. But if you have defined conditions in all these three, then this would be the execution order roles, conditions and script. This is how it looks in service. Now the roles, the condition and the script. I will take you to service now to quickly show that let's click on something random and if I click on advanced and then take you down, you can see roles. These would be calculated first. Then the conditions would be calculated on second number and third one would be the script. So this is the execution order in a particular ACL. After this, you would have seen this diagram a lot. I will quickly try to explain you. It's very easy. It looks complicated, but it's really, really easy. From the previous slide, we understood that roles will be calculated first, then the conditions and then the script. Now what happens? User will request to an object. So they are requesting for an object. They are trying to access some particular field. Service now will find some matching rules. And once it finds an ACL matching that rule, it will check does the user have the required roles. So it is calculating first of all the roles. And if it doesn't have, it will deny the object obviously. But if the user has the access, it will check the condition. And if it is no, that means the user is not allowed in the condition again the deny. But if the user's conditions are true, it will check for the script. And if the script returns true, the user is granted the object. But if the script returns false, again, it would be denied. So you would have noticed the user should pass all these conditions to get an access to that particular object. So it should satisfy roles, condition and script. 
only then the user will get access to that particular object i hope this diagram now makes sense and you understood it well the ninth question is what is the significance of order field in an acl so this is a very tricky question and the answer is order field does not exist on acl i remember an interviewer asking me this question many years back and i was confused with this question finally i was able to answer this but it's a very tricky question it's a very difficult question at that point in the interview because you have lots of information to process and they ask you this kind of question it becomes very very confusing so just to make your lives easier i have put up this question in this slide and please always remember acl doesn't have order field in moving on to the next question how to hide assignment group field from incident table forms list and reports from all these places in one go for itil user so for example you get a requirement that you want to hide the assignment group field from the incident table for all the itil users in one shot how would you do that the answer is really really simple you will create a read field level acl and give the roles as admin so that only admins can see that assignment group field and nobody else we will go to service now and test this thing i loved this use case so one of the youtube community member was asked this question and i was so excited about this question let's go and implement this i'm in my service now instance i will go ahead and create a new acl like i said it would be a read acl and would be a field level acl on assignment group i will keep the type as record i will keep the operation as read i will keep admin overrides here and then i will choose the table name here incident and after this i will choose the specific field here assignment group field and i want to give access only to the admins so i will double click here i will find the admin role here i will select this and i will save this acl so out of the box there is a table level acl providing access to all the itl users on this particular table incident but now you see on field level acl it's adding a new acl but it's masking incident dot star so that means incident dot star was providing access to itl user but now this acl which we just are about to create incident dot assignment group it will be taking more priority i will click on continue to create this acl and once it is created we will go and impersonate as itil user so i will click on impersonate i will select itl user and click on impersonate user button and now i will go to the incident table i will type incident dot list to get the list of all the incidents in the system you would see here the assignment group field is not visible let's go and try to click on this gear icon and try to search assignment group here as well and you would see there is no assignment group field here because of that read acl that field is not being displayed in the list view let's go and see on the form view and you would see here the assignment group field is not visible even if you want to go and check the view this is the default view which is out of the box view the assignment group field is not visible to this user now we will go and try to create a new report and see if the assignment group field is visible to this user while creating a new report or not i will give the name of the report as acl demo i will select data source as table and i will choose the table name as incident and i will click on next and again next and i will choose columns here and you would be able to see again this user is not able to access the assignment group field 
so this was an interesting use case which i saw and i wanted to bring up this in these interview questions i will also be making a second part of this because there are more questions to acls and also i have created couple of separate videos on real life use cases of acls the link is on the top right corner and in the description as well you can go and check out those real life use cases also these would help you in understanding the concepts of acls and these could also be asked in the interviews and now since you stuck till this point of video i have a bonus question for you and the question is related to the previous question now if we create another read acl to make assignment group field available to itl users will the user be able to access it or not so now we will create a new acl on assignment group field so that means it's field level acl and it would be read acl and give access to that itil user in the role section will the user be able to access it or not again a very confusing question let's go and implement this i have the answer on this slide but i would actually want to go and implement this and show you i will switch back to the admin profile i will go to acls to create a new acl i will click on this acl under system security again and i will click on new and here i will select read i will select the table name as incident and the column name as assignment group and i will give the role here as itil and save this and save the acl and continue now we have two acls on the same field if we go into the list of acls you would see the first two so these are two acls one of which is actually denying itl users to access the assignment group field and the other one is actually allowing the itl users to access the assignment group field let's see what happens i will now impersonate again as itil user i will click on all i will click on incident dot list and let's see what happens and you can see here the assignment group field is now visible to the itil user even if you go into the form or into the reports this field would be visible to this user if one of the acl is denying access and if one of the acl is allowing the object would be allowed to the end user so this is how service now acls have been configured i hope all these questions were helpful to you and you even learned something new in all these interesting questions and complicated or maybe confusing questions thanks for watching the video if you have any questions let me know in the comments don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video thank you